you're going to find yourself getting passed by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So you are in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. The up front, they are sp getting up with the Aberdeen, the Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Harry Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming behind the old hairpin. And I would say it's not the best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something. What's going on? In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and I thought she's dropped him all the way down the order. But Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Dan Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and Debbie doesn't want to be hearing that earlier on as well. Did put the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. You love the slipstream jumping towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him. Excellent third. Yeah, Barani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Pike's pushed more and fell up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Get out of go. Werrell, don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's still such a trouble. He's left on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. moving on to the back end of Bill Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Uh, absolute serious racing league. Everybody's allowed to have fun. Yeah. And it's all about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is it really bunching up now?
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like trouble. He's like on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the JPB GT4 Championship Round 2, live from Circuit Zolder. I am James Parfit. I'm going to be joined in the booth with the sultry tones in my left ear and right ear by the man that is Mr. Craig Jones. He's going to come along and join me for this evening. We'll keep you up to date with... But the standings, guys, of course, they are only done one race. But in the pro driver standards, it is Sven Demmel out in front at the moment on 72 points with Golden Haig in second. Jordan Malcolm in third. Kim Andre Bjortland in fourth. Kettle Larson fifth. Miles Owens in sixth with Anders Liliorde in seventh. Alexander Scarra in eighth. Then we've got Tobias Holman ninth. Tor Anders Bevan in tenth. Simon... Um, Simon Modikliev in 11th, Iwan Bremer in 12th, and Alejandro Caridi in 13th, Jesus Amandari 14th, Gavin Petty 15th, Marcus Gaithau in 16th, Chris Barnes 17th, and David Corpus in 18th place. In the pro team standings at the moment, it is currently at SRN. Holly Akemi in first place in Racing Norway, of course. Then you've got IGL Coatings and Sandy Traffics in second. Team Viking 4 in third. SRM Billog Motor Bloggen in fourth. Sim Racing Sweden Esports in fifth. Hugh Jask in sixth. Lurchis Amandari in seventh. One nine in eighth. Team Viking Ragnarok in ninth. Triple B Racing White in tenth with Lurchis Academy in eleventh. DCW Racing in twelfth. In the AM standings currently at the moment, Vigard Olsen Lea is out in front on 75 points with Magnus Dryrod in second. Stuart Pearson in third, Rob Williams in fourth, Pear Havard Halfstad in fifth, Richard Jones in sixth, Dan Lewis in seventh, Torbjo Mele in eighth, then Stefan Mellis in ninth, Ovid Anderson in tenth, Chris Evans eleventh, Stuart Rice in twelfth, Aika Luki and Rachel Hoff have not got any points on the board. In the AM team standings currently at this moment in time it is SRN Elkenstarad Saljoid in out in front of 127 with SAS Racing in second. Triple P Racing Black in third. SRN Hellstad Services in fourth. Bounty Hunter Double X Racing in fifth. West Racing Norway in sixth. And Blue Sky Esports have yet to get any points on the board. After all that one, I still managed to get it done before qualifying starts. Let's bring in Craig Jones to have a chat with him. Craig, a good evening to you, sir. How are you? Good evening, James. I am very well, thank you. I'm glad to be back here for a second week, uh, helping you out with a, a little bit of cover. So, uh, yeah, another, another round of the GT4s. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be good circuits older. We've been in a few times. You know, you've driven here yourself. How do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? I'm not a lover of it, I've got to be honest. I do like the track. It's a, it's a difficult track to master. It's, it's a very technical track. Uh, and one thing that these drivers are going to really have to look out for tonight and, and keep an eye on is the dreaded off tracks because you get an off track, particularly in the first UK, which we're just seeing here. Um, and yeah, you've got a, a real hefty uh, slowdown to serve. Uh, and it's quite bumpy, as we just saw there as well. So you've got to really take that chicane uh, really carefully, not push too hard, not use the curbs too much because it does unsettle the car. It definitely does. Good evening to Phil Sydney, Sweden, and Jarvi Pierce's in his mouth. of racing. I do think the slowdowns are going to play a massive part here, and I think it's going to be a problem for multiple people. They are an absolute killer around here. I. I I think a lot of drivers don't like this track in particular just for that for that very reason. 
Is it iRacing being harsh with the penalties? Um, I, I think so, it, uh, is my personal opinion. Um, but, you know, I suppose we've got to have limits. You know, track limits are there for a reason. But this particular chicane that we've just seen here as the cars go through, that is the real problem, problematic one, unfortunately. Um, and it's definitely single file. You might see drivers attempting to go around too wide. Uh, but it's really not a great idea on that particular corner. The, the second chicane, yes, you can go too wide. Uh, that gives you a little bit more room, a little bit room for, uh, more room for any errors. You can kind of save it with a, a little bit wider track area. But yeah, that turn one chicane is going to be uh, really interesting tonight. And that's where the pinch points are going to start to form. Yeah, I think that's going to be the problem for some of the people. That first chicane is going to be absolutely horrendous. There's going to be slow down city coming out of there. And it, this track is so rough. Also up into the 6-7 chicane, which is the one we're at right about now with Ovin Anderson. Save so too much on the way in there, you're going to be in trouble. And another load of slowdown sitting on the car as well. I am adjusting the, the sound as we go. Just let us know that you can hear us a lot better here as we are into qualifying now. Who's going to get on to pole? It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, Craig, as you've been here for two weeks in a row, you know the drivers now. Who are you going to pick? Uh, well, I think I made my decision very clear at the beginning. I think devil for pole position in this one. He looks really quick in practice. He was really quick uh, last week, so I think that's uh, I think that's going to be our pole man, Sven Demmel, eh? I'm going to go with Moldy Kliev. I think for pole. I, I think that's the, that's the plan there as well. Um, that's better. Cheers, Phil. That first chicane is also tough because of after it's uphill, you want momentum. I do agree with you. Uh, I do agree with you, Piercy. But the problem is, is obviously the way the makeup of the chicane, we can see it here on board with Ovin Anderson now. It's very difficult to go slow through it. To carry that momentum, you've got to go quite quick. But the problem is, is getting it lined up correctly. And we'll see if Anderson can do it. And I'll point out roughly where he needs to be. He needs to be bumping that first part there, take that second part, and that's probably near enough onto the line that he wants to go. He kind of tightened up the entry just a little bit to try and straight line it a little bit more, but that's roughly what he's got to be able to do. This is the one, though. This cutback absolutely kills me. Cannot stand this one. It, it just absolutely does up my nut in that second one as well, that tight right left. People try and go too wide and... It can all just go peak on Craig, can't it? Yeah, it certainly can. I mean, it's, it's interesting. My experience around this track is, is only in an MX-5 or a, a Renault Clio. So, you know, these, these cars are obviously miles apart from, from what these guys are, are experiencing out there tonight. But, you know, turn one, that can be a, a corner which, you know, there, there is a, a proper line to take, but you can take different lines through that and uh, that, that can cause you know some interesting uh, maneuvers going through that one and then through that whole section if you get a car side by side as you're heading down towards that that first chicane that's when you're going to start seeing the interesting decisions do you know do you back out do you let the car go in front do you, do you attempt to go too wide um I, you know i'd love to see it and i'd love to see that actually work but i don't think i've ever experienced cars going too wide through that chicane and it ever coming out uh, a success and just ending up in a in a huge crash uh, and, and tears, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to see the difference from what I've experienced of this track in the cars I've raced and what these guys are out there racing tonight. Yeah, I, it's a really tough thing with this because as much as you love side-by-side -side action, there's parts on this circuit where you think, please don't do that. One of them is the Klein Chicane, the left-right that we've just sit and, and we spoke about. The next one is the chicane between six and seven. Again, you want to make sure that you're not trying to go side by side through there. Pretty much most other parts on the circuit, you can go side by side. Don't get me wrong, this right-hander that Richard Jones has just gone down to, it's a tough one to run side by side. You've got to be really, really accommodating to make sure that you can get around there side by side. And, and I think... Overall, as we'll have a look at Sven Demmel do this chicane, it's a little bit tight because on the entry, on the exit, the car on the inside naturally starts drifting out to the left-hand side. 
So you're already going to be in trouble because the outside car is going to get pinched against the grass. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's a, a, a place that I've tended to, to favour in the past for, for for an overtake. So if you can do a deep uh, late dive up the inside, uh, try and make it work. But you are heavily reliant on that car ahead to, to be, a, be, be a gentleman, I guess, and give you that room. Um, and that's not always, you know, this is sim racing and that don't always, it always happen. So, you know, and then as you're running after, after that turn, you know, going into the left, you know, you're then on the outside for that corner. It's not really the, the, the great opportunity there for, for, for an overtake. So it's a real difficult track, Zelda. Like I said at the beginning, it's a real technical track. You do need to get some experience here to uh, really unlock its, its kind of key areas and its features and, and secrets, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be some interesting racing tonight. Yeah, it is. We're going to go up on Sven Demo and see if we can get a lap on the board. He hasn't got time on the board at the moment. He, um, yeah, no time currently for Sven Demo. No time for uh, a couple of others that are there as well. So he's going to have to try and get a time on the board shortly. Jordan Malcolm, the Australian, is leading the way at the moment. The 1-9 team. He's currently sitting on a 35-162. So a stellar job from him in front of practically the Norwegian country that has taken part in this race. And if you don't mean, if you don't know what we mean, that is what we mean. It is Norway versus the rest of the world here. It's great to see that they've all come in and joined us as Demo is on his way round Jackie Ipot, the turn 10 left right as we're going on to that start finish again. Uh, start finish straight sorry once more is demo going to be able to get a time on the board what is he going to get that's going to be the question has he put anything on the board he has and he's gone straight to pole position craig i told you didn't i i predicted it and he's uh, he's come through for me so yeah fantastic lap there maybe left it a tad late but um yeah still got it on four temps quicker four temps quicker than anybody else four temps quicker than jordan malcolm don't forget, guys, yeah, clearly, he's, he's, he's speedy, isn't he? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I, he's, he's clearly one of those drivers that we all just sit back and just go, how? How, how do you do that? I mean, you know, you're talking, watching it last week, there's some quick drivers in this series. Um, the, the standards uh, and the speed of these guys is, is really fascinating to watch it really is uh, i mean you just always seem to get that one person you know we all call them an alien or whatever you want to call them that just seems to get that little bit more time out and you know as a driver uh competing against these guys it's so frustrating to watch it really is yeah it definitely is and the michael darby there he's a freaking alien that's all he's put in youtube chat as well he definitely is, is Sven. Uh, I, I watch him on, well, he's going to be on JPB this Sunday, actually, probably in a Mustang, taking part in the FTR events. Dude doesn't even have a driver's license. That just... Oh, it does, yeah, that don't help. No, that don't, don't really help us there, buddy. So if you can <laughs> refrain from <laughs> telling us that, that would be amazing. Um, I don't want to know that. I've got a driving license as quick as these but then again i've been spending a lot of my time this week driving around in circles so you know um i can't really say a lot at the moment but you know, five minutes on the clock craig and, and sven's looking good isn't he at the moment for race one yeah he's certainly in a good position um i mean yeah i imagine like if, if he hasn't got a driving license is that is that age wise or is that just free choice that would uh, be interesting to find out michael how old is Sven Demel? And if you tell us he's younger than 20, I'm going to be even more sad. <laughs> I'm going to come back as a 12-year-old and we're just going to, one, feel really old and one, feel really just not Rubbish. talented at all, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. He's a team huge-ass secret weapon. He is, but how old is he? How old is he? <laughs> That's what we want to know. Might, might be one of those questions we really didn't want to ask. Yeah, maybe not. So you can see on there as well. Yes, Mikey, 0 0.08 between 2, 3, and 4. Wow, he's older than 20. Okay, cool. That's fine. 30s. Oh, all right. Don't feel so old now then. Uh, TPSE, you should have come and joined us. Should have got your boys in there. And we could have had a right old little ding dong for this season with some of the guys that have taken part this season as well. 
And that's a very quick we're in here. Point zero point zero eight. Between Iman Bremo, Gordon Haig, and, and Kim Andre Bjorkland. And then we get out to Jordan Malcolm in the pits at the moment. He's just watching himself go down the order on Kim Andre Bjorkland's got a purple on the board. He's coming in front of Jackie Hitbot, turn 10. Before we go down at the start finish straight again He's got a purple and a green but this could be an improvement he hasn't got to improve a lot mind you what's the offset against the two yellows he's got on the board he's got another yellow in sector three but he does go up into second 135.106 0 0.010 between two three and four craig that is some tight times yeah i know i mean it <laughs> It's, it's going to make the race interesting, isn't it? You know, that's uh, in racing terms, that, that's absolutely nothing. I mean, when you're in qualifying, I, I've never personally been a hot lapper. So I'm never I'm never as quick as these guys or, or even close to pole position. Um, but, you know, when the race and that flag comes down, you know, lap times and, and you're in a racing environment, you know, <laughs> that time difference falls even, even further, uh, especially when everyone's battling. So, yeah, it's uh, game on tonight, isn't it? Definitely is. Alexander Scarrett's not too far away either. And we'll bring you up the gaps with everybody there. You can see 0 0.325, 0 0.329, 0 0.35, 0 0.381. Before we even get out there, we break the second barrier at 11th place. 1.5 is down all the way down at 19th. Bigard Olsen, Leo Torbjörn, on Mele, Per Hafstad, Chip Pitts and Rachel Hoff, Ovid Anderson and Stefan Mellis is a little bit further down from that but this is going to be one tight first race don't forget they've got one sprint race then they've got a 40 a four, a 45 minute feature race after try and contend with as well and but just to top it all off we've been really horrible and only giving them 50 percent fuel that's something they can do as well great yeah, and we, we noticed last week that played a, a massive um, had a massive massive influence on the result of the, of the race as well. So we saw some very close pit finishes and coming back out on the track just in front of other drivers and and various bits and pieces like that. And and it was actually quite surprising f from last week. So the sprint race, you know, we saw it was a typical sprint race. We saw a little bit of drama on the the first three opening laps, but the racing was fair. It was good racing. Um, and that is what we, that's what we want to see. And I was expecting the, the kind of the more longer 45 minute stint to be a little bit more reserved and a little bit more, I don't know, let's say the, the risk and reward is, is slightly different in a race like that. You know, you, you might not want to take so many risks to begin with early on in the race, but we, we didn't see that. We saw some great action throughout the whole of that second race. It was uh, really good to see that even with it being a slightly longer race, that the drivers were really going for it. Yeah, they definitely were. And I think Sven Demel's going to go for it even more. I think he's just gone and improved on his time. 34-7, 34-4 now. Six, bordered on the line, six tenths. Scarrett goes into second place as well. Time's going to start coming in thick and fast. What is Kim Andre Bjorkland? He's got a yellow and a green. Is he going to get another green on the board here to try and top this one off, to try and improve his time? He's gone all the way to the right, which I was quite surprised about. I thought he might have run the wall, and he did improve, but not into position. Odekleev here in seventh. My boy's not doing so well. Just... And maybe next time. No real improvements from anybody else. Karini has got a slight bit of improvement in that BMW. We've got almost a pro-am split here, Craig. That doesn't happen very often. Oh, it's funny how that's uh, worked its way out, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely has. But let's bring you up the grid for race number one. And it is the man from Hugh Assett, Sven Demo, in pole position. Alexander Scarra in second. Kim Andre Bjorkland in third. Juan Bremer in fourth with Gordon Haig in fifth. And Jordan Malcolm down in sixth. Simon Modikleev in seventh. Tor Anders Bevan in eighth. Then Tobias Holman ninth. Marcus Gaystow in tenth with Kettle Larson in eleventh. Miles Owens is down in 12th. Chris Barnes in 13th. Richard Jones in 14th. Alejandro Caridi in 15th. Rob Williams in 16th. Chris Evans in 
17th. David Corpus, 18th. Stuart Rice, 19th. Vigard Olsen Leah is down in 20th. Torbjörn Mele, 21st. Peo Havid Hafstadt, 22nd. Stuart Pearson, 23rd. And Rachel Hoff in 24th place. On from that one, Ovid Anderson, Stefan Mellis, and Dan Lewis round out the seven cars. I'm not entirely sure if Dan's going to make it onto the grid. But overall, wow. It's, um, yeah, it, it's going to be an exciting one, Craig, I think. Um, do we think we're going to say see chaos and commencing in race number one? I think we'll see an element of a few spins, a few crashes, a few door banging moments. Uh, but that is what happens in, in racing, particularly in, in lap one, uh, lap two. Uh, you know, you got everyone's got cold tyres. Everyone's got to settle down a little bit. You know, the adrenaline kicks in uh, just before the race. And, and when that flag goes down, um, yeah, it's uh, it can be a rough ride for, for, for a lap or two. So I definitely think we will see a, a, an element of a little bit of chaos. Yeah, I think you might be right. Might be right. But let's keep an eye on this. See how we get on the guys that are going around their pace lap now. They've just got to take it very, very deep. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to why all of a sudden we have this moment where we get the rush of blood on opening laps and... Partly because I think for me, with the sprint race, got a top 15 reverse grid coming. You know, so there is still a reverse grid happening. So if you're in 10th, you're obviously closer to the front. If you go on. So I don't get the reason why they kind of rush. And I've been seeing it a lot this week in my trucks at Martinsville that people just want to go from last to first when we're in a 60 lap race. It's insane here. So, um,. I don't know, Craig, what do you think? At, at the end of the day, they're racing drivers and you can have all the strategies and all the best intentions in the world. But, you know, when you're out on track and you have these decisions to make, you know, if you see an opportunity, you, you, you're going to go for it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, from a driver perspective, it's sensible to, to, to play the long game. Uh, but it's it, like I said, when that flag goes down, that's not so easy. So... I think that's the thing, is not there. Michael Pierce, what are you up to? Drive a GR86. Go, Piercy. Come and join me in the trucks, Piercy, at Martinsville. Come and have some fun driving around in a circle. I will tell you now, it's um, very heat that way. So I did get my, I did improve on my time, mind you. Now I'm now down to a 19-3. I passed this time at my truck at the moment. Uh, which for me as a driver, actually 19.53. And anybody that knows me knows I don't really drive that much. So I'm, I'm quite impressed with that one. Coming into Jackie Itbuck chicane turn number 10. Got the Mustang out on track there, leading these GT4s away. Sven Demmel is going to lead us over the start line. Sven here is a, well, seems to be a machine. To be honest, I would go now. Why everybody's still coming through the chicane? I would have gone, would have left half the field blind. Just my personal opinion. Oh, he's waiting, he's waiting, and he now has gone here, coming down into turn one. Demo in the BMW gets the jump. Scarrett and Bork Bjorklund are going to go side by side. Scarrett's going to open up the steering in that Porsche. Takes off the nose of Bjorklund. Everybody makes it through just about. They're going through turn one, through turn two now on the run up through turn three here. And at the moment is Sven Demmel taking the whole shot, leading the way, Craig, doing a great job at the moment. Yeah, that was a fantastic start. That that picture of them coming that, down that, that straight was absolutely fantastic. Oh, we've got two cars going side by side there and uh, almost taking them, themselves off. I'm not quite sure who it was, but they did do a good job at saving it and trying to keep out of the barrier. So, yeah, normal... Typical first lap here in the GT4. There's a little bit of door banging, uh, but it's game on. Definitely is. Sven Demmel's broken away. Rob Williams got a little bit of a tap up the inside there. 
And unfortunately for him, he has done more pirouettes in the ballerina in Swan Lake. But it is Sven Demmel opening up now. He's got eight temps up the road. Kim Andre Bjorklund is in the middle of his pack. He's got Scarrett in front. He's got Bremer behind. It's a BMW Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. David Corpus and Gordon Haig are going down the order. Alexandro there as well. Pierre Havid Hafstad has also gone down. So I'm wondering what happened down further in this list. If I can get it to go upwards, we'll be able to bring you what went on with Gordon Haig here. Is this going to be all on his own, though? No, that's going to be the question by the looks of it. It could possibly well be. It is. He's gone round. He's hit the grass. He's going to come back on into the track. Is anybody going to be able to manage to hit him? They all scatter. Oh. oh. Well, good avoidance there, and everybody did a great job. Absolutely brilliant avoidance. That's what we want to say. And, and absolutely fair play to him getting out of the way and... and backing you're having a sensible idea of backing the car out of harm's way so that was uh yeah really good driving from everybody there yeah marcus gets down in ninth place at the moment richard jones is in there the leader of the ams so the guys in the ams are richard jones also leo stewart rice and then demo scarrett bjorkland and bramer leading the pros here rob williams has come back onto the track after being spun round well just as it happens Pushing Ovid Anderson off the side of the circuit. Oh. Where would you go with that? That's so difficult because the guy on the outside really can't go anywhere else, can he? He's got to look to come still on track. No, it doesn't look like he was he was understeering either. So it looked like he had the option to, to, to move over. Um, I mean, that's only a, a, an observation without seeing sort of better angles and stuff like that. But yeah, I think that one, I fear that one could have been avoided, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sure that will go up to the stewards for their stewards at weekly video report. If you haven't seen that there as well, the stewards will be doing weekly reports on the um on the cleos and the gt4s so they'll get both replays and it'll run through each the accidents and deem what was punishable what is not punishable here so great job from them thank you so much for them guys doing their time vigo dalton lear richard jones Stu rice are your one two three in your arms demos opened up 1.3 of a second and is now leaving the guys behind here sven's just gone and the top 15 reverse coming into this this could get quite exciting in the race too it could and i love a i love a good um reverse grid as well it does make things a, a, a little bit more interesting it makes it a little bit more spicy and you'll see some of the the, the faster guys uh, like demo having to come through uh, if, if obviously the result stays as it is um from that that position so uh, yeah it could be a really interesting race too oh just as we did on there richard jones has gone round Richard Jones has gone off the side of the circuit, unfortunately for him. Just as we panned away, he's hit the curb, he's unsettled the car. Around he goes. And unfortunately for Richard Jones, he has gone, gone, gone. He's now dropped down into the hands of Rachel Hoff. And she's on her inside through turn six and seven. She came off through turn seven, now the double right-hander. So great job from them. Kettle Larson is here he's in the mercedes he's defending hard from the sim race sweden esports miles owens who's climbing on the back of him here alexander scarrett has kim got kim andre bjorkland for company as well craig 10 10, 10 minutes to go here how do you handle a 15 minute race you have you race in a 15 minute race every week how do you handle it that's really hard to to, to answer really because I suppose every race is different, depends on where you start um, and who you've got in front of you and, and I suppose the track that you're at even. So there's lots of variables in that. Uh, you've got to you've got to just go for every single move that you can you, you can make, really. Um, and I suppose it depends on, on on how it's kind of set up. I mean, I've raced in leagues where just finishing is is generally the main aim so it doesn't matter where you finish as long as you finish because you're going to get points mm. um and i've certainly i certainly won the mx5 championship with that mentality uh of just trying to play it safe race uh and try and gain as many positions but ultimately it's just about being super super clean and and, and getting the car home in one piece so 
uh, yeah, you don't have a lot of time to make a move. So uh, you've got to, if, if you're that sort of driver and you want to push forward, uh, every opportunity that opens up, you've got to, you've got to jump on it and you've got to go for it. I did wonder how long that would take you to bring it in some form of. Um, James, I, I wasn't saying it to, to show your off. medals. I, yeah. I, I was, right. I, I was simply stating that that is in that particular league. That is how you won a championship, and any of the, my. The drivers that are in it would, would agree with me. Um, that is, the, it particularly, it was the Yam Championship, I will add. It wasn't the, the Pro Championship, but that is how you win it. Yorkland's trying to go up the inside over Scarrett. Scarrett's going to be running out wide. He's going to have the inside for turn number two. Slots in behind him. Doesn't take that opportunity, which I am surprised about there. As tour Andre Bourbon here in fifth place in the BMW. He's trying to make his way forward again. We've got David Coppers and Gordon Haig having a right little ding-dong down here. And unfortunately, that's now just been ended because Gordon has just gone off the side of the circuit all on his own there, unfortunately, for Gordon Haig. He's trying a little bit hard, I think, this week because he's, he's made a couple of mistakes, has had Torbjörn Mele and Ovid Anderson. So, unfortunately, but these guys are after going to go have to try and settle down. At the moment, Jordan Malcolm is in pole pos is in pole position for race number two currently sitting in 15th place he's obviously had a couple of off somewhere and that'd be why jordan and malcolm is all the way down where he has he did have a moment here this is coming into klein you can see the three wide two wide scatter in front of him oh a little touch of a mclaren what's she for jordan malcolm that they can't hold on but that does stand unfortunately though great what happens when you go off track at the start this is this is where you are isn't it look he's sitting right up there at the front and then makes a mistake in turn one and unfortunately puts himself further down the order yeah that's obviously trying to get a better run into turn one and, and just went a little bit wider than he really needed to uh, with the car on the outside there so yeah a bit of a clumsy one that unfortunately uh, but you know picked up the pieces and he's slowly making his way back for the field yeah tobias holman and it looks like miles owens have just had a little bit of a ding dong unfortunately going into that turn five door's not going to be open there son i can tell you that much oh that's the final chicane actually you can see everybody else just stopped Trying to get him out the way. Miles Owens going round one way. Where was Tobias Holman going? Well, at the moment, he's beyond a tree. He does let everybody else through. He's ended up down it in 15th. I think the door was always going to close, but the door probably should have been left with a gap on that. Yeah, I guess it's not one of those. It's one of those corners as well. Is really, do you want to make the move there? You know, not just cut in and get a better op opportunity going through into turn one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, all, it, again. I always speak about this. It's that risk and reward, isn't it? You know, uh, you get uh, you got that risk. If you're willing to take it, then it might pay off. But nine times out of ten, unfortunately, particularly on corners like that, it, it never does. So you're better off tucking in and getting a much better opportunity on a, a, a much easier corner to, to make the move stick. I think that's the thing. You would be better off um, just, just tucking in. I, I don't get it. Like, yes, you might gain one position, but it, is it really a big deal when you've got a top 15 reverse grid coming up here? You know, you're, you're not... It is a top 15 reverse, and if you're sitting in sixth or seventh, is it really worth taking that dive for that extra place just to put yourself into fifth? I, I, personally, I, maybe this is why I, I'm not a great racing driver, because I, I just sit back and think, I'm not going to jeopardise myself. I, you know, I'd rather just sit here and take the position. Yeah, I guess as well, as you come towards the end of the season, that's when you make... make slightly more sensible decisions you know we're still fairly up fairly early on obviously so you know it could be let's just go out there and get as many points as, as we possibly can i i was talking about this to, to a, another driver the other day um about the mentality of reverse mm. goods because you know the way we have to set up these sessions now in i racing you can choose the car you choose the number of when that grid reverses from yeah you know back in back in the day we used to do random number generators so you've got a 
27 cars like we have on track. It was literally one, one to 27. Someone hit a button and it would randomly choose a number. So you could get a full grid reverse. So, you know, uh, number one goes straight to the back of the grid and has to go all the way through. So it, it's interesting now that the drivers know what that number is, whether that changes their tactics at all. It, it doesn't seem to change their mentality of going for it, though. This is the bit I don't quite understand. I, I think for me, I would just be sitting back chilling. Um, you know, if I'm in fifth place, I'm there going, OK, well, it's going to put me roughly round about 10th. Do I need to go forward anymore? Probably not. Because the more I go forward, the longer I'm going to come back. As we can see, Tobias Holman, he's having a go. Rachel Hoff's on the inside. Tobias has got damage. You can see his left front wheel sticking out just a little bit further than it normally should do. So he's got a little bit of damage there. And Demo is still out in front in the pros with Kim Andre Bjorklund, Ewan Bremer, Scarrett still filing out this mid pack and they're still continuing to battle. In the AMs, it's Vigard Olsen Lea who is also the way up 11 places, ninth mm. overall. So I guess for Vigard, he's kind of showing the way on how to drive the sprint race when he's sitting up 11 places. Yes, it's how, you know, I guess that's uh, one of those drivers that's just going for it, isn't it, really? Uh, taking every opportunity uh, and, and trying, to, trying to make it work. So, you know, if it's working, absolutely fair play. Um, go for it. Um, let's see more of it. I do agree. I'll be interested to see how that reverse grid works out. Tor Anders Bevan side by side at the moment with Kim Andre Bjorklund. He's just about to go through, I believe. Coming into turn 10, Bjorklund's later on the brakes. Bevan cannot get through. And he's going to have to settle in behind him once more. 2.12 on the clock. We're going to have one and one more. Glenn Dummel is going into turn one in the lead at the moment. But it is these two. We've also got Chris Barnes and Moldy Kliev fighting it out in seventh and eighth of the pros. Moldy Kliev there in the Aston Martin and Barnsley in the Porsche. Teammate Mr. Williams not doing so well. Down in seventh in class at the moment. Had a bit of a rough one as Rob Williams for race one. Two laps remaining. Sven Demmel dominating though, Craig. He has done from the beginning. Yes, absolutely fantastic uh, race from him. Uh, yeah, he's, he's just cruising, isn't he? He's just out on a Sunday drive at the moment. Just uh, enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the track. Um, not a care in the world. Uh, yeah, happy days for him. Um, touching on uh, Bob Williams, though, did we, did we actually find out what happened in the final race of last time yes we did now the question is can I remember the reason oh I think we, we come up with a couple of scenarios didn't we we just didn't quite settle on what what the reason was yeah. Go on. Uh, we did but I need to find out. I can't remember what the reason was. I should have wrote it down when he told me. Give me two secs. I'm on the hunt. Carry on. Uh, the way I go and find what went on. No idea at the moment. Well, obviously you've, you've slept since then, so we'll, uh, we'll 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 let you off. But it was yeah, just out of interest to see if we actually determined what happened in that that final race because uh, yeah, he was do he was doing rather well was uh, Rob Williams, and then uh, all of a sudden uh, become uh, very unstuck and uh, didn't quite uh, get the. Uh, there we go. He got a black flag. He got a drive for on the final lap. Right. Okay. So we did think it was. Uh, hitting the penalty limit or something like that, didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah, that was unfortunate because, uh, yeah, he was re doing a really good race up until that point. Um, Callum, that is not you, actually. I'm not quite sure why the overlay is not doing what it should be doing. Uh, give me seconds. I will adjust that now. Sven Demmel is on his way down. The overlay has got a little bit stuck. Bear with me. It will hopefully come back now very, very shortly. Sven Demmel on his way around turn, the turn eight on the run through nine. He's now going to come to the left-hander of 10 and 11. Through Jackie Hippot he goes, and it is going to be Sven Demmel who's going to come over the line. He's going to take the victory in race number one. 
Demel comes over the line, absolutely dominates it. Scarrett's going to get second place just, I believe. And I think Ewan Bramer is going to take third. Scarrett is your first, second. Bramer is third. Bjorklund is fourth there. Vigard Olsen Leah in the, in the AMs look like he's going to come through and take the AM victory. So Vigard Olsen Leah is going to come over the line. Does a great job in that uh, first place in the AMs. And then Stu Rice is going to take second place. Great job from him. Stuart Pearson up 11 places, comes over the line in third for the arm. So there we go. Uh, yeah, all over places, frozen looks like, ah, there we go. Yep, sorted out. Five minutes left forever. Drivers are on lap 99. Wondering when will I, t when will it end? They're only on that many because obviously I don't want to pace out how many laps they're going to be doing in a 15 minutes. That's the only reason they're on 99 laps. It'll be the same for the feature. Okay, I'm just saying it will be the same for the feet. Waiting for a couple of others, a couple of others to come over the line now is Chris Evans. And guys in tenth place, which is David Corpus, gonna come over the line as well. You know it's only 45 minutes, PSC. Come on. Same for you when you were 99 laps. Just easier to, for us to pick a number. Set it at that. I don't want to pace it out. Work out how many laps it's going to be. Drive me insane. Right. Let's have a look at the final results here for race number one. Sven Demel is your winner. Alexander Scarra in second. Ewan Bremer in third. Kim Andre Bjortlin fourth. Tor Anders Bourbon in fifth. Kettle Larsen sixth. Simon Modikliev in seventh. Vigard Olsen Lea in eighth. Stu Rice in ninth. He's uh, also leading the AMs there. Rice in second. Miles Owens in 10th. Stu Pearson rounds out the AM podium. Marcus Gensdow in 12th. Alejandro Carini in 13th. Stefan Mellis 14th. Richard Jones in 15th. So it'll be Richard Jones on pole position for race number two. Jordan Malcolm in 16th. Rachel Hoff down there in 17th place. Moving on. Chris Barnes is in 18th. Per Havard Hafstad in 19th. Rob Williams 20th. Chris Evans 21st. Bias Holman and Gordon Haig 22nd and 23rd. David Corpus, Ovid Anderson, Torby Mele, and of course Dan Lewis did not start the race. Five minute warm up now, Craig. As well, what do you do during the warm up? Um, not a lot to be honest with you. Um, it depends. Well, no, I do. I do tend to take the car out a little bit. Um, after a race of having lots of cars around, you have a track that's fairly empty. Take the car out, but yeah, obviously, a lot of drivers use the opportunity to uh, maybe go and uh, empty their bladder or uh, you know, grab a drink or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's happening with Craig there, but it was in and out constantly on that one. Um, I'm not too sure what, uh, so apologies on that. If he was going in and out for you while you're sat at home, because he was certainly going in and out for me. Never mind, it might have just been my ears. I'm sure it wasn't, of course, Craig's own issue with his computer. Owns. Uh, I think everything's all right. It seems there all right, Ryan. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, not entirely sure what went on there for a minute. Um, so there you go. Don't forget, guys, if you are here, like, subscribe, turn on the bells, do all that other fancy jazz. We've got a lot more coming up on the JPB YouTube channel this week, of course. It's for constantly happening. There's something for you to watch every single day of the week. And tomorrow's the Radical Race Series day return in the SR10s and then Friday is the opening round of the TSRC F4 round one from Snetterton now we've got a big old busy Saturday with the uh, triple bypass kicking off at 2 a.m. Saturday morning and then we've got the VWSC modern round for 90 minutes of Imola and the WCCS which is F123 round six from Spa then we go into Sunday and we've got the Platinum Endurance League Aussie GT3 round three funny enough from Zolder on Sunday morning. Then we've got the Coffee Cup Round 7 GT3s from Bar First. The iFormula Referees Round 10. They're coming from Monza on Sunday. FTR Events 
round number three from Oldham Park. 60 cars, five classes, if you want to get yourself involved in that one. Well, that's going to be very interesting. And then the IGP returns on Sunday night at half past nine. So Sunday is no fewer than five broadcasts. So quite a busy weekend for us up here in the JBB booth. Get yourself involved if you want to. Like, subscribe, turn on the bells because you don't want to miss a minute there as well. And, and uh, we know Craig Jones sits at home and watches every broadcast anyway. So, uh, Craig, you've got quite a busy Sunday. I, I do not, but we all know someone who does watch every single broadcast, don't we? Yes, Phil. Yes, Phil. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hello, Phil. And why wouldn't you? I mean, let's face it, though. Like, we've had a particularly this time of year, there's not any racing going on in real life. So this fills that void a little bit, doesn't it? To come on, see some great racing, um, get some action, um, and you get some good banter in the YouTube chat as well. And you get to listen to the sultry tones of my voice all week. Walk you off. Of, of course, I, I forgot that's the most important bit, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, did, I did forget to mention that. Yes, it is the most important part. Thank you. Oh, just wait, man. Wait. What's going on? You ought to hear me all the time, Craig, when you race. Which was the... Uh, I know what you're referring to, and, and I will not be turning that on. Um, who, who, was the, who was the driver where his, uh, his wife liked your voice, liked listening to your voice? Richard Simnor. Richard's mm. wife turned around to said to him, oh, it's good to be listening back to James because voice is so much better than the other one obviously wasn't referring to me as the other one though was it? What, no, what it, it was another series that i believe richard races it not really sure what it was or who broadcast it or what the situation was but i will take that as a now compliment that uh, richard Dinor's wife likes the sound of my voice i did say does she want me to record like a message tone or a ring tone or or something for her to you know to be able to listen to me all day um she just laughed, and I said to Richard, well, she didn't say no. Like, I know, that's a worrying thing. So, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> they, they would use that for torture, surely. Your voice Get is constantly out. being repeated over. That, that You know, it, a, any spy would just give up their secrets immediately. Like, here's the information. I don't want to listen to that anymore. That is not entirely true, but Richard Jones will lead us away in first place there. Stefan Mellis. In second, Nali Hanju Karidi in third, Marcus Gezdal in fourth, Stuart Pearson fifth, Miles Owens in sixth, with Stu Rice in seventh, Vigard Osalia in eighth, Simon and Simon Modikliev in ninth, Kettle Larson tenth, Tor Anders Bourbon in eleventh, Kim Andre Bjorklund is in twelfth, Iwan Bremer in thirteenth, Alexander Scarra in fourteenth, Sven Demel fifteenth, Jordan Malcolm sixteenth. Rachel Hoff down in 17th, Chris Barnes 18th, Peter Hamid Hamster in 19th, Bob Williams in 20th, preferred to Chris Evans 21st, Bias Holman 22nd, Gordon A 23rd, David Corpus down in 24th, Ovid Anderson in 25th, Toby Mele in 26th, and I do not believe that Dan Lewis has taken the start, but it is going to be Richard Jones will be your pole man for the SAS racing team here. What more can we be excited about that we've got an arm on pole? Yes, um, and I'm sure it's a, it's an arm that's really wishing he wasn't on pole. Um, if, it, if by my experience anyway, um, quite often you don't like it when it's pole. Uh, but yeah, fair play. You're up there. Um, here's your opportunity. You're on camera. Everyone's watching. Uh, YouTube is uh, YouTube chat is ready to comment on 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 your driving, sir. So uh, yeah, fair play to you. Oh, Richard Jones gets on there. Record a sat nav message. See, he knows. He knows what to do. Well done, Phil. Turn left, you filthy animal. Works for me. That's just what we need from every sat nav. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I. Do you know what, Phil? Uh, with that message, there was the after message, but Craig got in there first about Craig getting lost at Silverstone again, and the fact that we don't really want Craig on pole at Silverstone because he does end up getting completely lost. Just being able to go around the short track, don't you, Craig? 
Well, I don't get I don't get lost rounds older because it's every corner looks different. Whereas Silverstone, every corner looks the same, and that's that's the problem with Silverstone. That's why it's one of the most boring tracks in the world. That's his excuse. At one point, guys, he was driving the wrong way completely up the race circuit as well. So um, yeah, for for Craig, unfortunately, they're going completely the wrong way up the wrong way as well to the point of where he got turn round messages. Not even sure that's a thing but it should definitely be a thing here we go now these guys are going to come around to start that 45 minute race 50 percent fuel but i'm not so sure what stefan mellis has got two number boards but i can tell you one thing richard jones has bolted he has gone green 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 straight off the back he takes the whole shot down into turn one does richard jones is everybody going to make it through cleanly this time around through turn one it's looking like they are there's a big lunge from the bmw of caridi up the inside there of marcus gesdow and Marcus now does get away. Looks like the whole field's moving through. No real dramas for anybody, even down here for Ovin Anderson. Everybody got away cleanly. Richard Jones bolting at the front here, Craig. And he's now gained. Oh, as I say that, it all just oh, does oh, that's not good. That does that. Hit the brakes, everyone. Wow. Where do you start with that one, James? Um... <laughs> I'll try and find the beginning. Um, I think that's. I believe it starts here. Gesdale runs wide. Then the sim race Sweden there. Miles Owens, I believe, puts himself in. And everybody else just kind of. So I need to pick up a Miles Owens. Really. Three. Tries to avoid the car return. Ah, there was actually one oh, of the Porsches. One behind. Yeah, the Porsche was already spinning. As well, the 23 from SAS. That's Stu Pearson, I think. Not Stuart Pearson. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was Stu Pearson at that moment in time. Because he started spinning here. The Mar yes, look, he starts the second one. He's in with Rachel Hoff and Stu Rice. And then, unfortunately. Bish bash boom. Everybody's off the side of the circuit. There's people trying to stop. Sven Demmel goes round. It all gets a little bit scrappy, but at the moment, Richard Jones leading by 1.5. Marcus Gesdow in second place there. There's a lot of going ons down here with Ewan Bramer trying to come back through the field. He's now gone past Rachel Hoff with Rob Williams. Jordan Malcolm's up seven places. He managed to avoid the chaos as well. Yeah, not a good start to race number two there. Traffic delays ahead, says Phil. I agree. Yeah, that was uh, what we would describe as absolute carnage um, with those incidents in the beginning. And it's interesting to note that, that the first car that kind of maybe caused the uh, the other cars to check up behind, you know, that hitting the sort of pity litter on the left there, you know, with the iRacing updates, that really does slow you down now. There used to be a time on iRacing where you could pretty much drive over any of the gravel tracks, and it did absolutely, well, it did do something. It did slow you down a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, iRacing has been tinkering, particularly on that one, and, uh, yeah, it slows you down dramatically. So it is like literally driving into a gravel trap in real life. So, yes, uh, yeah, unfortunate to see that, and uh, just a case of people just having to... Oh, that was uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a squeeze on the inside there. So, could have perhaps given a, a, a little bit more room. Um, yeah, that particular corner again. People are trying to make moves, and I just don't think it's worth it. No, 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 no. That's what we said. It isn't there. Tobias Holman looks like he had a, a little bit of a tap, a tap. Whether or not that's with himself, or whether or not that's somebody else is going to be to the right. I'm not quite sure what you're defending there as Holman actually dives straight down the pit lane. So we might have damage from that initial incident. Alejandro Caridi. The thing about that as well, it was kind of started with Gesdale going off the side of the circuit. And then, the, as you say, the gravel truck just grabbed hold of him. He, what, he couldn't go anywhere else. He couldn't go any quicker. So I think that as well doesn't help that he then ended up checking up. Then Miles Owens tried to check up to avoid him. He went round. Then another... Um, Stuart Pearson Porsche was going round as Rob Williams has just passed, made it past 
the very battered Porsche of Miles Owens. I don't think Owens has got any speed because Bremer is just going to breeze past him like he's not even there around the outside of turn six. Oh, he didn't. He wasn't quite brave enough to send it in there. But there was nowhere to go for the cars behind. Gesdal uh, checked up and that was it. Everybody was kind of stuck. Yeah, it's an unfortunate part of the track as well because you've got the barriers either side. It's, you know, there's no width there. There's no sort of escape access. So it just become a case of cars hitting the barrier and, and pinging back onto to track like a like a pinball machine. It was, uh, it does happen, unfortunately. So, yeah, really disappointing. And I don't think there was a lot that the drivers could be behind. Uh, perhaps maybe a little bit more checking up. There was a few cars that seemed to, should have been able to see what was going on and, and perhaps approaching it a little bit quicker than I'd like to see. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's easily done in racing. Yeah, it definitely is. And I've seen it in multiple aspects this week in the trucks where people just don't check up. Literally don't. It's a yellow flag. It means gain more positions and not slow down for anybody who is in happen to wreck. There's Jordan Malcolm and Bigard Olsen. Here, here leaves Malcolm so much room going round turn four. Malcolm just says thank you very much in that McLaren. And he's just going to go breezing past the arm of Vigard Olsen. Leah, I don't think Leah really put up a fight on that one. There, Craig, being it's a pro and an arm situation, isn't it? Steve, I yes, am... sorry, I am here. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was uh, de dealing with something in the background there. Yes, the dog's been at it. One, four. Get on Larson yes. and Karigi. <laughs> you can say it, mate. We work from home. <laughs> These things happened last week. I had to run away about right at the beginning of the broadcast because we thought a flood in the bathroom. So, you know, it, it happens. I think, um, I think he just wants to be part of the stream, James, if I'm honest. He's got all excited about the, the carnage from that one. Yeah, I think he definitely has as well. And uh, I think he has got a little bit excited on that one. Well, you know, he's, he's nice and quiet now, so we can get back to the racing. He's had his moment. He's had his uh, one minute of fame. Well, there you go. Little Rufus there, appearing and coming to say hi with 38 minutes to go. And Kettle Larson still is not able to get past Alejandro Caridi. Caridi doing a great job in that BMW. I tell you what, Stefan Mellis, he's putting up a fight and a half against Kim Andre Bjorklund. Bjorklund's surely got to be looking up the, uh, the uh, inside. Am and a pro, and the Am's not giving it up. We have made that statedly a rule. The position does not have to give up, but you, unless you're being lapped, and then that he's not, so he doesn't have to give it up. And I wouldn't be surprised there if Kim Andre Bjorklund just manages to hold on to that before he got a slowdown on that one. So Kim Andre Bjorklund making a move. Gordon Haig up 14 positions. There's some big old gainers here in this race, but then again. We also saw a parking lot, and one of them is David Corpus, who's just fighting it out with Gordon Haig in the Porsche there. Corpus is up 15 places. Yeah, there's been some big moves for the, for the field, uh, for, for sure, but generally everyone being uh, quite respectful in the in the chicane so far, so I, I thought we might have seen our first side-by-side -side attempt into to chicane number one but uh yeah they decided to back out and play the sensible game and there's still a long way to go in this race so uh yeah it's uh apart from lap one uh, i think it's been uh, fairly clean so far yeah it's brewing nicely should we say as greedy and larson larson is on the left in that green mercedes malcolm's in the back here of course jordan malcolm a resident australian he fights koalas and wrestles crocodiles for a living Caridi is in front of him. Is he going to be able to stop Malcolm coming around the outside? Larson's just got his nose chopped off. That's going to open the door up to Jordan Malcolm in that McLaren. Malcolm's going to look at taking the inside, leaving room. He's there all day. Now Malcolm settles in once more. He does go on the lights, and I'm not surprised on that one because you've just had your nose chopped off there, dear sir. Yeah, that, that bit of the track really does open up to that sort of driving, though. Um, and you can switch and, and swap positions and, and try to get the different lines. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not surprised that happened. Um, and, yeah, I, I suppose you can flash the lights all you want, but you can't change what's just happened, can you? No, and I, I don't get light flashing. I had it on Monday, and, and, and I asked the person why, and never responded. I understand why you do it. 
more of a distraction, I suppose, for the, unit, for the person in front, right? But if you are quick enough to get through, then surely just go past them on the track. Generally how it works is we're going off around turn eight before nine, which is quite kinky. Jump on board with Kettle Larson, who is going on to the back end of Alejandro Caridi into turn 10. He's not going to make this move this time around. And to be fair to Larson and, and practically anybody in the Mercedes, not the Mercedes or track in general. I don't think, apart from maybe the BMW split Porsche, it's made for any one of these cars, with, especially with them curves. Yeah, the, the, the curves can be absolute killers uh, around here. But, you know, I suppose you've got a, uh, quite a spread field of, uh, of the different cars uh, as you look down the, on the left-hand side there. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's any particular car that's maybe dominating. So we did see, I suppose so far, we've seen a, a BMW in, in P1 um, dominating at the front for, for both races so far. Um, but it's, it's good to see a variety out there as well. Um, and uh, I guess as well, you know, we mentioned in the in the break there, it's not like a, a race where there's, would you say, six six cars and five class, different classes in there. So um, that, that that's certainly going to be an interesting one. Yeah, if you want to check out Alton Park on for FTR events, got the Mustang GR86, the Renault Clio, the Mazda MX-5 and the VW Jetta. It's five classes, six cars, uh, 12 in each class, obviously five times 16, but maps different. Um, and it's, yeah, it's gonna, Alton Park is just gonna be absolutely insane. I'll be very interested about it. Yeah, but getting back into this one with Larson, Malcolm, and Honey Hundra Corini still fighting out. Pit stop should be around about 20 minutes. Probably 20 10 minutes remaining that seems to be the rough way we've seen it this season as he oh no oh they haven't done this together have they this is Ewan Bramer going off first Miles Owens has done something well or are they gone into the pit lane it's just pulled up that they both had a crash nope both gentlemen are just going into the pit lane now I've got a little bit nervous that Miles Owens and Ewan Bramer have crashed but Tor Anders Bervin and Rachel Hoff into turn one. Bervin in the BMW, that striking livery. I'm liking Bervin's gold livery as he's looking at taking the inside line. It's uh, some really nice looking cars. I think I mentioned it last week that these cars do, uh, they, they, they're proper cars, aren't they? They probably, they look, look like, look at home on a racetrack. So uh, yeah, there's some fantastic liveries here, but there's also been some fantastic racing. So uh, that, that particular section is uh, always good for side-by-side -side action. Going into that dreaded first chicane, everyone getting through there nice and cleanly. Try not to ride those dreaded curbs too much. Uh, coming down into uh, the second chicane, which is gives it a bit more white, a bit more width. Jumped up front a minute, because Jones is under pressure from Kim Andre Bjorklund. Is a pro and am fight. How much is Jones going to defend this? Gone all the way to the right hand side, defending that inside line. He said no. Kim Andre's gone on his bike and got past Jones there. He moved out of his way, right? I'm not, I, didn't just, yeah. didn't, I didn't just sit and imagine I, that. He got out of his way. I, I think that's a really smart smart decision to make, to be honest with you. Just get behind him and try and just uh, follow him as best as you can. and. Uh, hopefully uh, gain an advantage on the guy behind. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That is what Richard Jones has done. He's got about five seconds back to start. Anyway, but he's got time to play the Kettle Larson and Caridi. He'll continue by Jordan Malcolm's in the pits. David Corpus is also in the pits here. They, they, they'll, yeah, they've gone in the pits, mind you. They're getting their pit stop over and done with. It's going to be very close if they're going to make that. 31 minutes on 50. Then um, surely going to be a little bit tight. I mean, to be fair, you were spot on last last week with your predictions on uh, on pit stops. So uh, I'm sure you'll be right like this week as well, James. How do them words taste? 
I know the second week in a, in a row, isn't it, that I've, uh, uh, I've, I've backed you up. Um, and, you know, anyone that knows our relationship, I'm, I'm not very famous for, for backing you up, am I? No, oh, you definitely ain't. If you clip that one, that would be absolutely amazing. And Sven Demo here, <laughs> chasing down Marcus Gesdow, who, of course, has had his little bit of an incident. He he's, was, unfortunately, the cause of the first lap one. Um, just by hitting the gravel and then it kind of slowed the car right up and he, he didn't have, Miles Owens didn't have anywhere to go, spun it up and, but then again, Pearson in the Porsche also went round. So I suppose technically it was a bit of both um, as Caridi, Carl Larson still going at it. They're still not leaving each other alone here, Craig. And, and, and I think for Carl Larson, he, I don't really know what he can do. Is he just sitting there fuel saving to think until the, he can get a little bit longer in the pit stops? Well, I, I suppose you've got that as an option, haven't you? I mean, he's got a, a much better run there, going side by side. Like I said, this is Chicane. I don't know if I would be necessarily doing that, but, you know, he might force him into just letting him go. They are going to go for it side by side, and they've made it slip by the looks of it. That was an absolutely fantastic bit of driving. It was, and they're still side by side, coming from turn six. Are they going to be side by side into seven? They're not at the moment. Caridi's just settled back in. But Carol Larson has made it through. Chris Evans is into the pits here. Chris Barnes is in the pits. He's been in the pits for about 12 and a half minutes. Um, so I'm trying to find out what went on with young Mr. Barnes. That's practically after the beginning of the race, I believe. Something has happened to him. Ah, he's jumped back to the pits. So let's have a look and see what he did man from Triple Blade White. That's David Corpus in front. Oh, he's going to punch the wall. Ow! Mm. Ow, sis. That's not the optimal line. No, uh, can't park there, sir. Can't park there. Ben Demmel making his way. He's got Marcus Gez down in front. Demmel coming back through. Got caught in the lap one incident. Coming back through the field, though. Up six places from where he was. Don't forget he started in 15th. Went down the order a little bit, and now he's back up into the ninth. Tor Anders Bourbon going into the pits as well here. So a couple of guys taking that pit stop early, and that is the people who have pitted. It's mostly the bottom half from Jordan Malcolm would be the first one. Now. Yeah, so I guess we'll see how that's all going to pan out for them. And um, there's a lot of lot of fights going on here, so I'm sure. Yeah, well, it might have been a plan to begin with, and that's uh, that suddenly changed because of what's happened on, on track. And certainly no one predicted the first first lap chaos, and that might have changed the tactics of, of some of the drivers, and they've decided to go a little bit earlier than planned. So, yeah, we'll see how that uh, that pans out for the rest of the race. Oh, big intake of air from me on that one. I thought Sven Demmel was going to go and join the back end of Gezdal's car there, uh, but he managed to stay away then. Didn't manage to join the back end, though, for him, he played with him quick again. Do you know my picture of Sven's setup, what I've got in my head? It's quick, it's in his 30s, that's fine. All I could see that would make me sick is driving on a Logitech G920, strapped to a desk on a TV with a wooden chair. Yeah, I, uh, that, that's my I image. Think, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to, to, to again, to know what that, what, what that is, because, you know, lots of people say about setups and stuff, does it make a, a, a lot of difference? But I, I really think it does. Um, I think it does make a huge, a huge difference. So um, I don't think he is driving on, on, quite on the setup that you're, you're imagining in your head. Um, but yes, it would be quite sickening to learn that that is the actual case. Because, uh, you know, I've, I've invested a lot of money in my, my setup and I'm still not as quick as him. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to point out. I can dream. What I've explained for Sven is what I race on. Um, I do lecture, grab a steering wheel to my desk. And yeah, but I you're do. rubbish, though. Well, I'm faster than you. Sorry. Sorry, did I say rubbish? Um, I meant you're uh, not quite there yet. I'm driving around in circles and I'm still quicker than you. Get out. I'll take you on 1v1. One one. Pick a track. Right, fine. Pick a track and a car and we'll see. Yeah, okay. Fun. There you go. Battle of the booth. That's what I see. That's, that works. We call it that as well. I, 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 beat, I beat you in the trucks at uh, um, Fruxton. 
I got torpedoed off. <laughs> I think it doesn't matter, I still beat you. <laughs> I got torpedoed off, for God's sake. I can't even remember who by, but somebody torpedoed me off the side of the circuit. Um, oh, demo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he was going for it as well then for a second. Oh, Dem Demo scaring the life of up as he went into the pits like an absolute freight train. Reedy and Gordon Haig now. Demo's in, so it's where's Malcolm? Malcolm's on his way round eight. Average pit stop time round about... Well, to be fair, they're all over the place between 42 and 52 to 53. But this could be an interesting one for Jordan Malcolm. Get hold of and pass Sven Demel. Demel's still in the pits. He's not going anywhere yet. Malcolm's going to come through. As Malcolm just about pulled... He has. He's going to do him, you know. I don't think gonna Sven Demel's going to get on his bike quick enough. Jordan Malcolm's going to take that position. So Jordan Malcolm's early pit stop. He's playing in his hands here, Greg, because everybody hasn't pitted in front of him. If he's just jumped Demo, who has, was in front of him, there's an opportunity to jump the rest of the field in. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and it'll be a, a turnaround from uh, a, a fairly chaotic start to race one for him, and uh, didn't didn't quite go to plan, did it, for race one. So, uh, yeah. yeah, potentially a, a very good move, that. Yeah, he did pit early, did Jordan Mount. I have seen him do some amazing fuel strategy. Has Jordan. Mind you, he did it in a, in a cup car, a NASCAR cup car, but it was incredible that the victory was spotted over the lunch. But it was absolutely incredible. So we know, I know the kid can save fuel all day without a shadow of a doubt here. Gordon Hayes now in the pits. Where is the long pit lane though, isn't it? And I think that's the thing. That's what's working Really, Jordan Malcolm's favour. They've got quite a long way to go. Malcolm's on down at eight, and you guys have not even stopped yet. But this could be another two places that Malcolm's going to gain here. Carl Larson and Stefan Mellis is going at it. Malcolm and Scarrett, where if he can clear, I think he's going to clear Gordon Hague and Marcus Gester. Is a, a, a bit of a strange pit set up uh, at this track. It, 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 particular the exits uh, quite long you can't really do much ab about the power until you've, uh, you've hit the cones unfortunately so uh, yeah it's uh, so far working in his favour God, he has got Scarab following him as well so both of these guys are gaining at the same time Larson's got back a little bit but then he's in the bit of that's oh, called Anderson there it is, currently behind it, down at the border, with, up the class order, which he goes in hands. Let Jordan Malcolm Scarrett, he allows Scarrett to go through. The thing is with that, I can guarantee from Malcolm's perspective, that's planned. And now, unfortunately, I might have got away with the slowdown, but from Jordan Malcolm's point of view, that's probably planned, but might save a little bit of fuel, and being up behind somebody makes it easy to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of what I'm about to say, but yeah, I feel you could be you could be right on that one as well, James. So uh, yeah, it could be uh, some really good, smart kind of long game mentality going on here from uh, from Jordan Malcolm. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll find out if it pays off for him in in about 22 minutes time, I guess. What is it? One night this that I'm right loving this. Um, uh, Sven Demel's trying to chase down and score the Haig in the Porsche in front. Demel in the BMW. We've got a good spread up the front. It's Porsche, BMW, Mercedes. Porsche, BMW, Aston. Porsche, Mercedes. And then Porsche and Porsche round out the top 10. Uh, we have a BMW and an Aston front just outside of the Ams. It's BMW, Porsche, Aston. Porsche, Mercedes. Porsche, Mercedes. Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. Porsche dominated field, of course, but not having it all their own way this week, Greg. No, they're not. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, interesting to, to, to see the dynamics at, at play here, and it, it's quite mixed across the field. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but I can tell you one thing, Alejandro Caridi. That was never going to work, unfortunately. You know, the worst thing about that is I can see why Simon's gone for but 
is again the same situation you fight. It was never going to work. He didn't have a slowdown, did he? No. I think the thing is. Yeah, Ovid Anderson was a lot of down. Uh, wow, so it was technically a battle on track because they both were a lap down. Um, so from that aspect, as Demo and Haig, it's called it, they're going from turn eight side by side. They did manage to work that one out. Haig's come away from the McLaren this year that he was so fast in last season and has now taken on the Porsche. But maybe, I think, from Gordon Haig's position, oh, that was quick. This devil does clear Gordon Haig there. Get, Haig gets a little bit loose. Gets that was going to come and have a jump on him as well in the Mercedes on the left-hand side there. Oh! Man! Definitely gave him a little bit of a squeeze there, bud, didn't he? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's the sort of racing that we, that we want to see. You know, we want to see this constant change in position. Uh, this is the part of the track where you can really make that happen and make these switches uh, turn around, but you absolutely have to get it nailed in, in these couple of corners because, like I said, you do not want to be making a move into turn one. We have seen it tonight and we have seen it end clean, clean so uh, yeah, props to those guys for making that work. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to make a move, you really need to have made it by now. It looks like the rice is in. Well, rice in. Pit lane. Oh. They are here. Seven robbers. There you go. Right. Now in the pits, so that's going to be where Malcolm is again. Coming down to turn eight, which seems to be the place that he's able to get the overtakes done. But I've got a funny feeling for Hanley Andrew Caridi. going to be another lost position. And Scarrett has also. Yes, Scarrett has been in the pits. So it looks like Scarrett and Malcolm are round about where they should be on track. They overtake Alejandro Caridi's another position today for both of these guys here, Greg. These early pit stops from Scarrett and also Caridi, uh, Scarrett and Malcolm. But the thing is, if I'm not mistaken, Scarrett went in on lap one. So he's going to have to do another stop. Yeah, so that might be a, a reason for the uh, the switch before, I guess, as well. I, I, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting with these longer races, like the, the pit stops have such an impact on on where you finish. Um, so, yeah, strategy is a massive factor in, in this style of racing, and that's what, we are, that's what we're seeing tonight. Got a Malcolm there. Going with Rachel Hoff, who's been overtaken by Scarrett, as I say. I think there's another hit stop coming, Garrett, as Carini and Bremer go side by side. Carini, but they gave that up just a little bit. But then again, as I said, it is that kind of thing, not one that we want to be trying too wide either. No, you just, you just, just no. I, 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 I was going to say, when I was commentating on them doing it before when they went, it came uh, one. Side by side, I was just about to say you've got to be either brave or stupid to, to try and make a move there. Um, and I'm glad I didn't say that because I'm sure neither of them are, are, are stupid, and it was definitely the brave side of what I was saying. As Pearson does remove himself from the equation, Demo sets the fastest lap on a 1 that 34 84. So Demo at the moment on for that extra point for the fastest lap. So Demo doing a great job. Malcolm's now in the mix with Rachel Hoff. He needs to clear her as quickly as physically possible. Different, completely different pit strategy. Hoff has not even gone in yet. And Malcolm has gone in and trying to make his way to the front. Always the thing when you've got different pit strategies, Greg, it's yours to work, but you need everything to click together to make it work. Yeah, you do. And I suppose every time you make a pit stop, you, you know, you're never going to know if that's actually going to be your last pit stop. Um, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong uh, with taking an early pit stop. 
uh, there's so many things that can go wrong with taking a, a late pit stop. So you just you just don't know. So it is a bit of a roll of a dice sometimes uh, with, with, when it comes down to the pit strategies. Uh, but so far, so good uh, for, for Malcolm. Uh, it seems to be working in his favour. Yeah, it definitely does. And, but he's got a clear hop. He's got to clear the people in front. Now, I would expect them to come in, but they're not coming in. I'm surprised that. Stefan Mellis and Fernando Sanchez are here. Mellis has stopped, but he's going to be there for another nine seconds at least. Going to watch Jordan Malcolm gain another two positions over Vigado and Lear. There goes one, there goes Melis that he's gained now as well. He really, really needs to clear Rachel off and he needs to do it soon. Straight soon up here for Jordan Malcolm because his pit strategy is not working out. Give the inside up, don't pressurize it. Jordan Malcolm's going to go through. Rachel Hoff there does allow him to go through. Now Jordan Malcolm can get on his merry way a little bit longer than I think he was hoping there, Craig, for Jordan Malcolm. Yeah, absolutely. But at, at the end of the day, the, 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 the job's been done now, can move on, and oh, oh. something's happened here, hasn't it? Yeah, even Bremer was involved. Oh. Hmm. What's that called? Egan Gesdale. Ellis come out and end up in the mix here. Hayes gone up the inside, he spun him round. Spun him round, and there is Iwan Bremer. Nowhere to go, unfortunately. Um, not a good idea. Bryce ends up on the grass, so yeah, unfortunately, maybe there's there, does go a little bit wrong. Williams is entered the pits. Richard Jones is entered the pits as well. So two front runners, Rob and Richard, are in the pit lane now and are currently stationary. This again should be another gain of positions for Jordan Malcolm. We clear both of these. Hoff's in. Everybody else is in. Williams is going to be going in. Scarrett, we think, has got another pit stop to make at least. Just cleared the SAS Racing Boys. He's just cleared Richard Jones. And Jordan Malcolm moves the club up in fourth place overall now, Greg. That early pit stop is definitely working for Jordan here. Yeah, absolutely, fair play to him. Uh, great call. It's uh, worked out uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, just concentrate on uh, keeping the car on track and, and bring it bring it home. Don't feel he's gonna massively gain anything further. But uh, yeah, really good, really good decision to take that early pit stop. Well, if Scarrett's got to go in again, there's no reason Malcolm can't get any further. Is he going to get to? Andre Bjorklund, who's just gone in the pits. So where is Malcolm in conjunction? Malcolm's coming down turn six and seven. Champagne. I don't think he's going to get kill Andre Bjorklund. Bjorklund's not stopped yet. Ah, uh, yeah, because you said, uh, yeah, you said Scarrett uh, came in in lap one, didn't he? Yeah, I think Scarrett's got to go yeah. again. Uh, so, yeah, so he has got the opportunity there for potentially getting a podium position then. Yeah, he should have. But I don't know if he's going to be enough to pick up on him, Andre York. Malcolm's down on the right down behind in 10. Yorkland is on his way, so he will come out in front, so he didn't get him. What about Kettle Larson? Jordan Malcolm's coming from now. Where is Kettle? Yeah, Kettle's on his way out. Just about. Oh, yeah. Larson's on the left. Look for the purple McLaren on the right hand side. Here he comes in now. Kettle Larson's still going to have the position, but they're just about to yeah, come he's, out. He's going to get it done, I think. He has got it done. Yeah. Jordan Malcolm now potentially could go up into second grade. Well, then, that, that is a, a, a genius uh, decision to make, isn't it? Um, I could close this thing back up, and, uh, yeah, so fair play. I've, yeah, absolutely. Called it early, and it's uh, it's gone like a dream for him. Uh, as for Jordan Malcolm, Miles Owens is here with David Corpus from the Lurcher Sim Racing for the Sim Racing Sim Race Sweden Esports Boys. They've been caught up in a little bit of a. Ta ta ta! Can we say? Is anyone Bremer went and, and punched the side of Gordon Haig? Not like physically cut out and punched it, I meant into the car. Um, not quite sure what Chris Barnes is up to. He's still in the pits and he's 30 in the pit lane and so i might try to get hold of barnes and find out what's going on uh with him 
around and see what happens. Wait patiently, comes from Chris Barnes, find out why he's still in the pit lane. We're about 30, well, 30 minute pit repairs in here. So, yes, quite a, quite a long pit stop for Chris Barnes, because basically most of the race, Scarrett has gone in, which is what we did say, Greg, and now Jordan Malcolm, second place. Second place, yeah, fantastic. And, uh, you know, hasn't really had to do a lot for it, really. Uh, just been driving around the track and... Uh, just letting it or the, the positions naturally uh, be be gained, and I, I suppose that's the that that's the easy way to uh, get a good result in a in a race. So uh, absolutely uh, fair play to him. Pretty good driving for the bottom now. For Andre Berrettori and his Berber got Vigado and Dia on in the classes at the moment. See on the left hand side, Richard Jones is your man in first place for the Ams. Give on Jim Yorkland his first in the pros there so um yeah, for richard jones his lead he's got also yeah down in fourth he says anders bourbon go in front um chris barnes has said my driving was shocking tonight mate so it's just best to sit it out fair enough i think he's then probably spotting for mr williams who is fifth in hams down in 12th place overall, up eight places from the beginning. Quite big gainers, really. It's the middle five, six, seven are the only ones that lost positions. Um, Richard Jones, Stefan Mellis, Alexander Caridi, Miles Owens is the number one that lost places. He's still battling away with David Corpus. Eight to go, eight and a half minutes to go here. Do you try and now, what do you do? You're Miles Owens, you're sat there. You're behind a man who's up 16 places. Clearly isn't slow. Clearly doing the job. But what do you do if you're Miles Owens? Do you push the pass or do you try and clear him? Or what do you think is going to be the best way, Craig? It's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's Especially at this point of the race. So, that you know, the race is now turning into more of a, that sprint race mentality. You know, you've got eight minutes to go. Uh, the laps are ticking away. Um, you want to make moves uh, under pressure from from uh, the guy behind as well. So you're really in that sandwich, and you don't want to push too hard because you can make yourself vulnerable to the car behind. Uh, but then you, you you want to gain, you want to try and take advantage. Uh, it, it's it's a difficult one. It really is, and I suppose it's really easy as us commentating on this. Uh, to make a call and it, it looks so obvious and it looks so simple but you know we don't know what's going on in that car and how the car's feeling and um you know has there been any is there a slight bit of damage that's causing the car to to, to not kind of behave in, in the right manner there's there's lots going on that we can't see from from the outside so uh yeah i guess we'll i guess we'll find out what the outcome will be very shortly seven and a half minutes the leader's just gone over the lap of 135 135 to the one thirty five, put it at three ten, six twenty at least another four laps here as we're sitting above the windscreen of Tor and as Bourbon as Kraidi, um as literally David Corpus and Miles Owens have a little bit of a tap tap tap. How far back did Owens come? Well we're gonna find out very, very shortly here. Oh, we come from a long way. Long, long way. Yeah, I'm not sure he was ever going to make the apex and make that stick on that one, unfortunately. Uh, so mm. I think that would be classed as a, a, a bit of a dive bomb in my books. Yeah, Miles Owens was never going to... Um, Ewan Brame has jumped to the pits again. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think Ewan's probably given it up as a bad job here this evening. He's brought up in, a, in quite a few little incidents and accidents. Went into the pits and left the pits and literally went back to the pits after that. Jordan Malcolm got Kettle Larson closing in though, but a podium is still better than nothing. And look at the man in fourth, is Sven Demmel up 11 places. Yeah, oh, he's had a fantastic night, hasn't he? But we knew he was quick uh, from, from, from practice. Done a great job getting it onto a uh, pole position for race one. Done a, a fantastic job in race one. Just uh, ended up 
so far ahead, just just chilling and, and, and enjoying going around. Um, and then the reverse grid has, has struck and he's, he's made the best he, he can to, to go forward in this race. So, uh, yeah, it definitely, uh, I, I don't know, I was going to say maybe driver of the night, but I, I, I think that would be taking it away from the accomplishments of, uh, of Jordan Malcolm, because I think he's uh, played this one absolutely spot on. There he has, as long as he's got enough fuel to get over the next five and a half minutes, that's going to be the question. He pitted back on lap eight. A lot of these guys pitted on lap 20 plus. So for Jordan Malcolm, let's hope he actually got enough fuel. He's the only one there in the top 10 that's on single digit pit stops. Corpus and Evans are the only other ones, and Miles Owens and probably in the pits. Ovid Anderson also. But for Jordan Malcolm, that's a long way to go. Sven Demmel pitted on 12. We've got Larson pitted on 20 with Bree Auckland. Larson's just got that chicane all a little bit wrong. Demmel's going to be looking around the outside now. Is he going to be able to get that inside line? He's not coming into the chicane between six and seven. Down through the right, down through the left. Then the double right-hander now, this long right-hander. Down to the exit of turn seven before we've gone down on the run. Down through turn eight. So who comes down the left, down the left hand, I drop over the little bit of a dip. Onto the brakes, we're gonna go now. Finding your breaking point, demo. Oh, I definitely found it there, Craig. We're definitely close in the process. Oh, we, we noticed this last week, didn't we? He's so good on the brakes. Uh, and and that's, that's definitely where the difference is, is coming from uh, in, in terms of his lap times. Uh, he just seems to be able to do something with that car that you know others, others can't, so um, yeah. King of, uh, King of the Light Breakers, I fear. Ben Demel there, you can see Jordan Malcolm's on the defense through this windscreen of this BMW. Malcolm went on the defense there. Demel's going to try to cut back at one point. I'm sure they're going to be three wide. I can feel it coming on through the entrance of turn two. Demel's diving. Oh, Larson got hard on the brakes, corrected the car. Now he's round the double right hand. Up. Through turn three, we go on the run up into four now. And Sven just sitting there. He's, he's also. Reminds me that he's just sort of like a tiger. He's waiting for something to happen. He's waiting for some mistakes to happen. And he's going to pounce on it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're watching this at home, hold on to your hats. This is going to be uh, edge of your seat action uh, for the final three minutes of this race. This is really heating up now. Uh, is he going to make a move into the second chicane? Oh. He is. He's going to make it move and he's going to make it stick. Fantastic move. Yeah, Jordan Oh my giddy god. I've got the huge ass chasing me down. <laughs> best, best name ever. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, oh, I just couldn't resist. Uh, Malcolm goes a little bit wide coming out of turn eight. This is these guys having a right old little ding dong here. We've got Vigard Olsen, Leah up behind Scarra. We've got Williams three seconds back. He can lead them at the moment. Miles Owens is chasing down on Gordon Haig. This is now a pro on pro. Well, last season it was Ham on pro, but these guys continue to fight as they go over the hill coming out of turn five. Dubu down into seven, uh, six and seven chicane. And Miles Owens doesn't go anywhere this time around. What about Jordan Malcolm? He does not go anywhere. Apart from in the lead, Sven Demel, Kettle Lass is still chasing it down here, Craig. I would have crapped by now. I probably would have ended up going off the side of the circuit. Yeah, it's, it certainly, as the, the, the famous words say, it's, it's certainly easier to uh, chase than, than be chased. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's swallowing up this pressure really, really well at the moment. And let's face it, we've seen uh, Demel do some uh, late late dives and, and, and really go for it. So he, he's going to be putting the pressure on him. It's going to oh. be a matter of um, time before he makes a move. This is where he seems to be making, he seems most comfortable. Got it again. And yeah, another fantastic game. Uh, that is the way that you, you do an overtake into that second chicane. Yeah, he's got it through once more. Kettle Larson's going to, uh, Kim Ojib Yorkman's going to come out over the line. He's going to take the white flag this time around. Barney will be a waving a plenty as we're coming towards the end of race two. Look for Barney on the right hand side. There he is, waving his little frantic right hand off as he is now on the white flag. It's Kettle Larson, Jordan Malcolm, white flag lap battle for the final place of the podium. 
Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic lap, last lap, and uh, it's great to see in longer races like this, you don't always tend to see these last lap battles. So uh, really exciting to see that we've got this battle to, to, to commentate on, really. So, no, yes, can Jordan Malcolm hold on? He's had such a fantastic race, really good strategy. Um, he's going to make a, a tad wide there. Um, so, yeah, just got to keep it calm, keep hitting your braking points, don't do anything silly, uh, and, you know, rest of this lap and yeah you've uh, got a really good performance there that you can really be proud of i think yeah we've got gordon haig and, and that's david corpus alongside i believe and chris evans is in there from the Triple Peaks. they're having a bright little ding dong down here as they're going to oh <laughs> what happened there I think Miles Owens missed his pits, his braking marker again. Evans lets it go through, settles in behind. He's on his brakes, on his brakes, on his brakes. He tried to avoid it. I think he just didn't. Oh, Bjorklund. Oh, he did go off. He did go off. He's going to come and take the check of the flag. We'll have a look back at what Bjorklund did do in the final chicane. And I'm wondering if that was the result of the Chris Evans thing. But Kim Andre Bjorklund is your winner in race number two. Demel's going to come over the line and finish off the top three of the tops. Oh, the second place. And Jordan Malcolm's going to come over and finish off the podium. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. What did happen to Kim Andre Bjorklund? Oh, he just missed his breaking point. Well, there's that nearly how to do yourself a cropper there. Richard Jones is going to come along in the AMS. He's going to take the victory. Has done there as well. But Richard Jones wins wins the AMS. Stefan Mellis in second. Him, and then in third place, I believe Vigard Olsen Lea has just taken the third place away from Mr. Rob William. So unfortunately for Rob, there is in fourth place Gordon Hay comes over the line Modicleev comes over the line as well Chris Evans Rachel Hoff as they're all coming down into the final chicane and it's just Ovin Anderson who found up at turn seven at the moment and that's the McLaren of, of uh, actually Ovin moving out the way who's David Corp Corpus right the way around the other side of the grid there as well um uh, Miles Owens missed his breaking point say that I, yeah, I, I don't think it was a, a a failure of any kind. I think it was just yeah, driver error. He, he it certainly wasn't deliberate. You did see him try to to move out the way when he realised his mistake last minute. Uh, yeah, a bit of a bizarre one and uh, and un, unusual for him to, to to make a mistake like that. Yeah, he's had a couple of rough ones tonight as as Miles Owen. Not really sure what went on. We'll bring up the results here from race number two final race of the evening and it is Kim Andre Bjorklund your winner by 11.9 seconds over Sven Demmel Jordan Malcolm pitted on lap eight and got to the end there in third place Kettle lasted in fourth in the arms it was Richard Jones and Stefan Mellis rounding out the one two Alejandro Carini for Anders Bourbon and Alexander Skara in the middle Vigard Olsen Lea rounding out the podium there Rob Williams just missing out at fourth overall. Torbjörn Mele in 12th with Simon Modicleev in 13th. Rachel Hoff in 14th. Gordon Hagen in 15th. David Corpus down in Evans down in 17th place. Then you've got Stuart Pearson, Stu Rice, Miles Owens, Pierre Havard, Hafstad, Ovid Anderson, Tobias Holman, Marcus Gesdow, Ewan Bremer, Chris Barnes, and of course, uh, as well. Very excited evening of racing, and, and I think it's always weird when you look at the 45-minute feature, how quickly people want to insist on getting to the front, which I still can't work out to this day. Yeah, I, like I said before, it's, I suppose everyone's got a different strategy or, 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 or how they want the race to pan out, but the race never always pans out the way that you, you, you're going to want it to. Uh, and, and what you intend to do is very different when that flag goes down and you've got opportunities in front of you and 
and stuff happens. So, uh, yeah, that that sort of uh, racing driver mentality takes over and you just go, ah, you know what, let's just go for it and, and let's see what happens. But overall, I think really clean racing, uh, apart from that lap one uh, incident. Some great results. Uh, great to see what, what, what Malcolm did. Uh, Dan had done a fantastic job. Uh, and it was also good to see um, the the arms of uh, Jones and Mellis up there as well, uh, fighting uh, in the top six. So, yeah, yeah, great job from them. Definitely was, but we chat with Kim Andre Bjorkland. And here as well, the man who's finished the feature race in front. Kim Andre, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> good race? Yeah, pretty relaxing. That's really? the right thing to say. <laughs> yeah, I just, after I got the gap, after the crash on lap one, I just was lifting early, saving some fuel, take it, taking it easy. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Very, um, very confident from you there, dear sir. You know, well done if that was it, but... Did at any point it get difficult out there for you? Or you, were you just cruising continually from the beginning? Uh, second race, it was pretty much cru cruising from lap five, I think. Uh, the one mistake I did, I watched on the standings, <laughs> missed this last corner, but... <laughs> yeah, we did see you go off there, mate. Did you like, yeah. just miss the concentration, or...? No, just looked up on the standings to watch where the where the other guys were in behind me. Hey, Who was second, third, and fourth? But yeah, yeah, that's going to give you quite a nice little bump up in the points, of course. Um, Sven taking first in sprint, getting second in feature yourself as well. It's going to be a close battle at the front this year. Yes, yeah, Sven is going to be hard to battle with. I think he's extremely fast. Yes. So I'm not sure how that will pan out, but I will do my best. Well, sir, <laughs> sir, that is all we can ask. Do your best. Go out there and fight every week. See what yeah. becomes of it there as well. Kim, anyone you want to shout out before we let you go, bud? Uh, my team and you guys, of course. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much there, buddy. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, blimey. Hold on. When I get to have a chat. Why am I... Hold on. I actually get to have a chat to one Mr. Rob Williams here, who's managed fourth in... The AM um, feature race. Welcome in, Mr. Williams. How are you? Oh, you're good. Thanks. Rather warm. You're sweating a little bit there, buddy, are you? Yeah, just a little. Just a little. Yeah, very interesting one. Up nine positions for you. Did you get caught up in the feature race beginning? Yeah, unfortunately, I um, slammed on anchors, as you do, and not everybody did behind. So, a bit caught out, but it happens. Yeah, it, it happens. It definitely does, and uh, it's been an interesting night for you, hasn't it? Yeah, race one was interesting. Uh, bless him, Mr. Barnes. Um, a bit later on the brakes than I was, and um, yeah, that was a start. And then I think it was Ivan Anderson in the uh, McLaren pushed me a bit wide. Yep, we saw that and going into the into the same corner. Um, I had nowhere else to go but onto the grass myself. So unfortunately, he turned, and not me. Yeah, there weren't, um, there weren't much room, to be honest with you, Rob. No, I didn't. I couldn't decide whether it was my fault for pushing down the outside, and I thought, well, I was already up alongside pretty much before I got pushed off gra onto the grass, so I'm not overly sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Listen, fourth in the championship going into this, right? You've beaten yep. Pearson, you've beaten Dry, uh, Di uh, Dyrod, and yep. obviously Leah is in front of you but he finished got the win in the sprint and the third in the feature where do you see this season for you with the pace i have at the moment i would say that i'm going to be in the top i'd like to to be in the top three All right um i had good pace coming in this evening um i knew that 
in race one that if I managed to get past, um, is it Richard James? Yep. Um, because the BMW is absolutely naff over the first three or four laps, um, whereas the Porsche is slightly better behaved. So I had a chance of breaking away at the start of race one and possibly putting myself higher up into race two. But obviously it didn't work that way. So you reckon top three but this season? I'm hoping for a top three, yeah. Okay, no, you do know that it gets promoted into pros next season. Yeah, well, I was top three last season, so. Well, there you go, Mr. Williams. Thanks so much for joining us. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Just you guys for doing a great job, obviously, Triple P, Blade Designs. And that's it. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody, and I'm sure I will speak to you soon. You will do, mate. Thanks very much. Uh, and the last one in the booth is Stefan Mellis, who benefited from the reverse grid, took the Porsche for as long as possible before he pitted. He pitted down on lap 29. He's come away with a second place in the arm. Stefan, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Hello. Yeah. How are you? How are you, dude? You good? Hey, yeah. Uh, it's, I, I think uh, I hear a lot of things. Uh... Okay. Huh? Seven. Yes. Oh, yeah. how was your race there, bud? Uh, very good. Very good. Uh, I'm very surprised. <laughs> uh, never expected this. Uh, I was already surprised to after the sprint. Uh, but I think a lot of cars were spinning and, and crashing. Mm -hmm. That was a bit my luck, of course. And in the the main race, I think it's like a bit a bit the same. I heard uh, my crew chief telling me, uh, saying a lot of uh, crashing there, crashing here. But uh, yeah, I, I kept on driving, and and I, I'm very surprised. I I'm second in the M's. Oh, yeah. I, I think. Yes, I am. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you finished second, mate. You did finish second. Don't okay. worry about that as well. In the championship, though, what's the aim for you this year, Stefan? Because it's a tough group, this AM series this year. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 when I when I can drive like this, I'm, I'm very, very happy. When I finish uh, the race without any spins and, and or crashes, I'm also very happy. So I, I have to find, yeah, I, I have to be honest, I have to find one or at least one or maybe two seconds. But uh, yeah, I don't know where to find them. Practice. Yeah, practice. That's, that's the biggest thing there, buddy. I think practice, practice, practice. But Stefan, it's been fun to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. Anyone you want to shout out before we let me go? Yes, my wife, she's in the on the couch here and, and uh, I'm in the living room. Thanks for... Yeah, letting me do this in, in the living room. <laughs> yeah, good, good job there, letting, you know, shouting out the wife as well, mate. Well done to you. But I'll catch yeah, up with you me. soon, Stefan, and uh, good job and well done. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And the last but not least on the uh, in the interview booth this evening is our resident Australian, the man who's safe for your wedding early, managed to get the car all the way up into third, gained 13 places in race number two. And that, of course, is Jordan Malcolm in the McLaren. Jordan, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm good, mate. It's been a while. How are you? All right, mate. I'm not too bad. I'm just chilling, you know, watch a great racing. Saving fuel again, I see. Yeah, uh, unintentionally saving uh, uh, fuel. Uh, probably pit one up too early, so I had to save in that back end, which allowed uh, Sven and uh, Larson to um, probably stay with me that back end. But apart from that, it was a, a pretty chaotic night, actually. So Yeah, there was a lot going on, wasn't there, in race one and two right at the beginning? Yeah, um, I didn't see the track. I turned my first laps uh, last night um practicing um so yeah went into turn one went to my normal turning point um and then yeah there's a car that's turned in a bit earlier than the, what i was practicing with so just a bit of um clumsiness on my part but apart from that um we fought back um a little mistake in the first race as well probably cost me pole position for the next one but um to start outside the invert and finish third i'll take it hey you, you've got to be up here as well and as you say you went in a little bit earlier than probably what you thought you would have done as well so overall it's been a good evening of racing coming into this in 
third. Gordon Hayes had somewhat of a bit of a shocker this evening. Sven, well, Sven did Sven things, and obviously Kim Andre's around you. What's the hopes, John? It's a tough, the, the pro and ams are tough this season. Where do you think you're going to end up? Uh, well, we'll see how work and all that plays out, um, obviously, first and foremost. But um, we'll try and get to as many of these races as we can. But I don't think that I'll be chasing any championship aspirations. Um, these are mostly European-dominated tracks, and it's a pretty European-heavy league. Um, so, you know, these guys are going to be on the top end. And it's a bit like, you know, you come to an Australian track and you get all the sweaty Australians that always are you know, drive those tracks. So um, it's a bit like that, just trying to increase um, my speed around the, the European tracks, which I probably struggle a little bit with. Well, good luck going forward, of course, and hopefully we'll see you on the circuit again next week. Anyone you want to shout out, buddy, before we let you go? Uh, yeah, just the team at uh, 1-9 and uh, Armin. Uh, this is his favourite track, Zolder, so uh, <laughs> good to put it on the podium for him. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm a Bruce. We had a horrendous time in Martinsville last night, Jordan. I'm not going to lie. We were like 15 cautions, 14 cautions in. It was insane. Uh, <laughs> might, have, might have to go back and watch watch uh, the uh, commentary. Uh, it, was, uh, yeah. it was more go of a back. podcast. It was more of a podcast. More of a podcast? <laughs> yeah, mate. Um, I'll, go, I'll go and listen to the podcast. <laughs> I will as well. Jordan, take care, buddy, and we'll catch up with you soon, mate. Awesome. Thank you. Well, there you go, Greg. That's the end of the interview. Happy drivers, really, in Junction. Yeah, and rightfully so. I think it was a great night of racing. Uh, I, I can't believe it went so quickly, to be honest with you. And that's always a good sign of a of a good a good race with lots of lots of elements going on, lots of strategy, a few, a few incidents. Uh, so yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I definitely did there as well. Thank you so much to everybody that's joined us in YouTube chat. Don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells and do all that other fancy jazz that you can do here for, for completely free on YouTube as well. Any comments, leave us comments down below. That would be absolutely amazing. But for now, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I've been James Parfit. I've been in the, the booth alongside one Mr. Craig Jones as well. So thank you very much for Craig for joining me this evening. And as always, take care. Have a great week. And you never know, we might see you on the track sometime. Good night.